Hey everyone, welcome back to Extrovert Paints. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how to paint this Warlord miniature in the tropical bleached green uniform of the DAC soldier. So um, I've already done an introduction to this video. Unfortunately, at the time I didn't notice it, but an ice cream truck went through and totally ruined the first take. And uh, I didn't catch it until after I listened to it again um, when I completed painting the green uniform which is why I have a completed miniature to show you at the start of this video. Um, so here we are redoing it over again. I will try to make it quick and concise for you so we can actually get into the painting process and uh, you will see where we're at with this. So as you can see, this is the faded green uniform rather than say the bleached bone type uniform that you sometimes see or the darker green version, although you could you could follow the same steps I'm going to explain to you in this video and just remove a couple of highlights and you'll achieve that stage uh, perfectly fine. So we will only be using three colors to achieve this. This is a video which follows the, uh, the layering technique. So we will be layering up as opposed to say using contrast paints or whatever. I don't really use contrast paints or speed paints. I find that I don't like them. Um, there are plenty of videos out there of people who do like them and use them and they are perfectly fine and uh, if you are interested in that sort of technique, uh, this is not the video for you. However, this only took me 20 minutes to paint. So if you're concerned that layering is a time consuming process, I can tell you right now it is not. And although this is not the smoothest layered miniature that I've ever painted, it's quick. Uh, and you do get a very nice, in my opinion, very nice effect from it. Um, and it sells the look very, very well. So um, if, this is, uh, if this is your type of, uh, of YouTube tutorial, then welcome. Uh, so anyway, um, let's get into it. I'll get into the housekeeping part of it right now, which is the paints, etc., the brushes. Um, so to start with, I'll show you the brushes. I only use two brushes really for this process. One is the Army Painter uh, Wargamer Kalinsky Masterclass brush. It's a detail brush. I haven't really cleaned these since painting, so they're a little bristly at the moment. But uh, yeah, I do all of the very fine work, fine layering work with this brush. And then for the, uh, the, actual, um, the actual main painting, I use this brush, which is just a cheap artist lofts brush from Michaels. Um, it is a size one round and believe it or not, these work great for getting your base colors on and doing minor layering effects because they're actually very decent brushes for what they cost. And, uh, yeah, you don't need to worry about the tip fraying or whatever for doing basic paint work. Um, so like I said, we will be using mainly just three paints. So let me just zoom out here so you can actually get a good look at them. Uh, we will be using... AK Interactive DAC Green Uniform Base and AK Interactive Light Green Uniform. These two paints come from the DAC Soldier Uniform Colors box. It looks like this. Uh, it is pricey, like you can see I spent 25 bucks on it, but well worth it. It has the three greens of the faded green uniform and then the bleached Bone uniform color, which is a color that your their tropical uniform got when it was just in the sun for a very long time. Um, it faded basically from the green to the tan here, and that's what happens. So anyway, um, those are the two main colors that we're going to use. These two right here, and then this is our mixed 50/50 to get our shade layer, our base layer, and then add. Um, this on its own just for our midtones, which is the light green uniform and then to the midtones we're adding Vallejo desert yellow 50 50 for our first highlight and then more desert yellow for our final highlights and what you can see here this is what it looks like on my palette so here is the shade slash base layer here is the midtone and here's the first highlight with that 50-50 mix with desert yellow. And then here's desert yellow on its own with a little bit of that 50-50 mix blended in just to get that highlight color that I was aiming for. 
And if you're curious uh, about the primer that I used, I started out with um, UK Bronze Green from Vallejo. That's the, it's not quite black, it's not quite gray, it's in between and it has a little bit of green mixed in, uh, which gives you uh, a really nice starting point for your shadows. Um, so it's, it, anyway, that is the primary process. And then, like I said, in this video, we're only talking about the green fatigues and then in future videos um in a future video rather we'll talk about painting up the rest of the miniature and this is because i know everyone out there has different ways to paint faces and and uh and helmets and goggles and all that stuff but if you want to see how i do it tune into the next video where we will cover uh those aspects of the kit the webbing and all of that and uh in this video stay tuned for how i painted this miniature from start to finish thanks for watching see you at the end Okay, so I tried to get the painting on camera, but unfortunately the camera just shakes too much and I'm a little worried that uh, it's not going to show up very well on the time lapse that I did. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna talk you through the colors that I use and then I'll show you them off, uh, you know, on the palette and then we can work from there. So I do apologize. I was hoping to do an actual time lapse tutorial um, but honestly, you, you probably are more here for the techniques and the colors rather than, uh, and the paints that I'm using rather than watching me just dab paint on a miniature. Um, so yep, you can see here, this is what it looks like with, uh, one coat applied of the base layer, which again is the green uniform base and light green uniform from AK Interactive. So again, very uh, very overall base coat for this because most of the uniform is going to be in this uh, sort of khaki green um, tropical color. So this is uh, this is just the base. Now we're going to move on to our mid-tone which is just the uh, the light green uniform from AK Interactive on its own. Um, I will be layering that up slightly so thin layers uh, over the folds just to get um, uh, get that painted. I will cover about 80% of the uniform in this mixture and then just leaving that original um, dark green uniform, I'm sorry, the green uniform base and light green uniform mix, this right here in the recesses uh, for the shadow. So I will be back after I paint that up. Okay. So as you can see, if I can get my camera to focus, I have to keep moving it out of the way so I can paint. Um, why is that not focusing? Focus. There we go. So as you can see, I've got the uh, I've got the first the, the the actual midtone on there now. It's uh, very subtle. You should not see too many. Um, too many differences between the original layer and this one. The reason why we put the original color down first is also to help build up the color of the midtone. So we start off with that darker mix, just mainly to get that color down. We're not really being careful. As you can see, I've not been careful here. I've, I've got some green on the, uh, on the webbing. Um, I've also got some, I've gone over a little bit on the skin. But again, this is just our preliminary layers. So our first layer was our base layer. That's just getting the color onto the primed figure. Um, also giving us some deeper shadow. Now we are actually building that color up to the midtone. This is the layer that the uniform is going to be, um, you know, this is the color that the, the uniform is essentially. So that's what a midtone is. It's, it's the layer that we highlight up from this is the layer that we want to be visible underneath those highlights or in between those highlights, if you will. So um, now we're going to go ahead and start applying those highlights slowly. Um, the, if, we were just, if we were just to go from, and I just wanna show you here so you can kind of get an idea. If we were to just go from this color directly to the highlight, I'll put it here on this corner. Um, let me see if I can get it on there with you guys seeing it here. It's a little bit of a stark, too stark of a transition uh, for me personally. 
And uh, we, what we want to do is you can just see, I put it right in that corner there. You can see it's magnitude is brighter than the green that's already on there. We're going to layer this up twice just to bring it up to this coat right here. And then what we're going to do is steadily add more desert yellow into this mix to brighten that up until we get to pure desert yellow. And that's going to be the highest of the highlights. Um, and again, if you're curious what that's going to look like when we're all done, uh, here's a figure from, um, this is from uh, Artisan Miniatures without anything else done to it. It's just the uh, highlight all the way up to uh, that desert yellow. And I think I have a better one here to show you that isn't so, isn't so chalky. There we go. So this is uh, an example of the uniform um, going all the way up to desert yellow. So and it doesn't look like much right now because again, it is just the green and we will be doing other things to it. Um, but you know, here's uh, that a miniature that we were looking at earlier from Warlord Games. This is one of their, um, their, their German military police officers here. And you can see what that looks like uh, when it's highlighted up to desert yellow with other, other paints applied. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we're gonna come back to what that looks like uh, once it is all the way highlighted up. So I'll see you in a minute. And again, this is the color we're starting from. It's just a 50-50 mix of that uh, light green uniform from making interactive and desert yellow with a few drops of the glaze medium and a few drops of water. And that's what we're doing. And we're gonna layer it up to um, we're not going to get the pure desert yellow. I'm just going to show you what it looks like after two coats of that particular mixture so that we're all on the same page. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this is just to the first highlight. And I apologize, uh, it is a bit glossy. That's because of the glaze medium. It does add a bit of sheen to your paint. Um, at the end of all this, um, through all of these tutorials for the DAC, what I'll do is I will post up um, in the thumbnail a version of the uh, the final miniature matte varnished so you don't have to be afraid of what it's going to look like uh, when it is completed. So as you can see, this is just the, um, this is layered up only to the first highlight, which is a mix of the desert yellow and the green uniform, the 50-50 mix. So now we're going to steadily and um, slowly add additional desert yellow um, drops into that mix to get all the way up to pure desert yellow at the highest highlight. Okay, so if the camera stays focused, maybe you can see how I've highlighted that up. And again, I apologize for the glossiness. Uh, it is highlighted up to almost pure desert uh, yellow. The reason why I didn't go the full way is because I wanted to show you one of the benefits of layering, which is you have the ability to stop at any point in the highlight process if you think you are happy with it. And you don't have to press to get this um, all the way to desert yellow if you don't want to. And you can go desert yellow, you know, full desert yellow on another miniature that you want to have more bleached, uh, more bleached clothing or, you know, wh whatever you want to do, it's, it's totally okay. And, and this is the benefit of layering is you get these very interesting um, kind of variations in the uniform. And your uniforms, unless you're batch painting, your uniforms aren't going to look exactly the same every time. And that gives character to your miniatures it gives them a little bit of, of their own sort of individuality. Um, you know, it, it kind of tells a story, like this guy has been in the desert longer because his clothes are more bleached than another, another guy's, you know? And it just, uh, it just adds a little bit more. And unfortunately, when you use things like speed paints or contrast paints, you don't have as much control over this process. Now you can dilute it with thinner or medium or whatever, um, but I find that if you really want full control over the way your miniatures look, layering is the way to go. And this actually took me fewer 
uh, fewer minutes than I thought. So when I said the full 15 minutes, it only really took me about 10. And the reason why it even took me that long is because I went back in a couple of times with um, some of my other mixtures and I just, uh, just cleaned up a little bit of an area where I felt like the transitions weren't that great. So for example, on the shoulder here, um, I'm trying to get close without actually touching the miniature because I can't really see with the camera in the way, but you can see here on the shoulder there, um, I added a little bit more of my original base color, my mid-tones, uh, just to kind of layer that up. The same thing with the back. If my camera will focus on it, maybe focus. I don't know why this one focused, but um, yeah, I did. I did subtly go in with some of the original midtone, and on the leg here where there was shadow, I went in and with my original base color, which is that 50 50 mix of the green uniform, uh, green uniform base and the light green uniform from AK Interactive, just to kind of repopulate those shadows underneath where the uh, uh, the mess bag and, and the uh, gas mask bag and the canteens and all that hang over. So one of the benefits again of layering is you have the ability to go in and add those shadows back, um, blending it in generally instead of just having a sharp contrast. And if you go over anywhere like I did on the webbing, uh, you don't have to worry about rebasing it. You just paint over it uh, and it's not going to affect anything because the paints that you're using, you can control the opacity. So. Um, anyway, just wanted to get to this point, and that's going to be the end of the first video. The next video, we're going to talk about skin, and then after that, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about the webbing and the uh, the rest of the kit, like the helmet and the goggles, uh, etc. We're going to go over all of that in future videos. So stay tuned. This will be a series. Um, I know that some of you probably wanted to see a one-off video, but uh, I really am trying to spread my videos out because I, I actually have time today to film and I want to make sure you guys actually get some content to watch. So that's going to be it for now. Moving on to the next, uh, which will be skin coming up in the uh, next video.